Shotguns have this wild reputation, loud, powerful, and almost mythical in how they spray pellets across a room. You've seen it in action movies and video games, one pull of the trigger, and suddenly, everything in front of the barrel is history. But what's really going on behind that blast? Why do shotgun shells scatter into a cloud of pellets instead of shooting one solid piece like a rifle? Is it by design or just a side effect of how they're built? And more importantly, is the spread really as wide as pop culture makes it seem? Today, we're digging into the science, history, and mechanics behind that iconic blast. Why do shotgun shells spread? Right here, on History of Simple Things. To understand why shotgun shells spread, we first need to break down what's actually inside one. Unlike rifle cartridges, which usually fire a single bullet, a typical shotgun shell is packed with multiple small pellets called shot. These pellets are all crammed together inside the shell, often held in place by a plastic cup-like component called a wad. When you pull the trigger, Gunpowder inside the shell ignites and creates high-pressure gas. This gas pushes the wad and the pellets down the barrel and out the muzzle. Once they leave the barrel, the pellets begin to separate and spread out, kind of like opening your hand while holding a handful of marbles. But why does this spread happen at all? Why don't the pellets just stay in a tight group? That's where physics and design come into play. The spread of shotgun pellets is mostly due to internal and external ballistics, which is just a fancy way of saying what happens inside the gun and what happens after the pellets leave it. Inside the barrel, the shot is packed tightly and moves as a single unit. But once it exits the barrel and hits open air, each pellet is on its own. There's no longer a force keeping them together. And because of slight variations in weight, shape, and the turbulence of the air around them, each pellet starts veering off in its own direction. Imagine you're tossing a handful of pebbles forward. Even if you try to throw them all straight, they'll naturally fan out a bit because no two pebbles are perfectly the same. That's essentially what's happening when a shotgun fires. Now here's something a lot of people don't realize. You can actually control how much a shotgun shell spreads using something called a choke. A choke is a narrowing at the end of the barrel that squeezes the shot together as it exits. Think of it like putting your thumb over the end of a garden hose. It changes how the water sprays. In the same way, a tighter choke will keep the pellets in a tighter group for a longer distance, while a looser choke lets them spread out quickly. There are different types of chokes, cylinder, improved cylinder, modified, full, and even extra full chokes. Each one changes the pattern of the spread depending on what the shooter needs. For example, a hunter trying to hit fast moving birds at a distance might use a full choke to keep the shot tight. Someone shooting at a close range target might prefer a wider spread. Another factor in the spread is the size and number of the pellets inside the shell. Shotguns can be loaded with different sizes of shot, from tiny BBs for bird hunting to larger pellets like buckshot for self-defense. Smaller pellets tend to spread more quickly because there are more of them and they're lighter, so they lose momentum faster. Larger pellets like 00 buckshot stay together longer and hit harder but don't spread out as much. So, the type of shell you're using directly affects how wide the spread will be and how far it'll stay effective. It's all about trade-offs. More pellets mean more chances to hit something, but they don't go as far or hit as hard. Fewer, bigger pellets mean more power but less room for error. You might think the length of the barrel would make a big difference in spread, and you'd be right but maybe not in the way you expect. 
A longer barrel doesn't exactly make the shot spread out more or less. What it does is allow the pellets to build up more speed and help stabilize the wad and shot a bit better before they leave the barrel. This can lead to a slightly tighter pattern. But the choke has a bigger influence on spread than barrel length does. In practical terms, you'll find longer barrels on hunting shotguns, which need accuracy at longer ranges, and shorter barrels on tactical or home defense shotguns, where maneuverability and widespread at close range are more important. So why is spread a good thing in the first place? The main advantage is coverage. With multiple pellets flying in a pattern, you have a higher chance of hitting a moving or unpredictable target, like a flying bird or a running intruder, especially under pressure. That's why shotguns are popular in both hunting and close quarters defense. Spread also distributes energy across several points, which can be both an advantage and a drawback depending on the scenario. For hunting small game or birds, it's perfect. You want to bring down the animal without destroying it. But for larger game or self-defense, people often prefer buckshot or slugs, which trade spread for stopping power. Shotgun shells aren't just limited to birdshot or buckshot. There's a whole world of specialty shells that change how and if the shot spreads. Slugs, for example, are single large projectiles fired from a shotgun. They don't spread at all and are meant for maximum impact over longer distances. Then you have less lethal rounds like rubber pellets or bean bags which spread differently, or novelty rounds that are just plain weird, like rock salt or confetti shells used for shows or signaling. Some shells are even designed with pre-fragmented shot that intentionally spreads in a very specific way for certain tactical applications. So, to wrap it all up, shotgun shells spread because they're firing multiple pellets at once, and once those pellets leave the barrel, they're each on their own. Factors like choke, pellet size, barrel length, and even the type of shell all influence how much they spread and how far they remain effective. It's a fascinating mix of physics, design, and practicality. And while movies often get it wrong, the real-life behavior of shotgun shells is just as interesting, if not more, once you dig into the science behind it. Next time you see a shotgun in action, whether it's in a movie, a hunting trip, or a historical context, you'll know what's really going on when those pellets start flying. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.